What's up guys and welcome back for another video. My name is Riley and today I'm going to be doing quite a bit of a different video. Today I'm going to be doing a video that is tailored more towards absolute beginners in cryptocurrency and how they can create their own $1,000 portfolio for cryptocurrency beginners in 2018. So for some of my more experienced listeners who are already into cryptocurrency, this may not necessarily be the video for you. However, if it's the first time visiting this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button as I make all other videos about cryptocurrencies and coin reviews. So without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so before you start, I want you to think about and choose an amount of money that you can afford to lose. For example, I've put here $1,000 because I think it's not a tiny amount of money, but I don't think it's sort of, for most people, I don't think it's within uh, without reach. And what I want you to do is to ask yourself whether you have the gusto, the emotional fortitude to what we call in the cryptocurrency space HODL, which basically means hold, uh, when the times get rough, when the prices, when say you've bought Bitcoin at 20000 and it goes back down to 6000 are you do you have the emotional fortitude to hold on and have the belief to know that that Bitcoin will go up above the price that you bought it at? If you invest a certain amount of money as well, for example, a thousand dollars, you have to ask yourself a question of if I do lose this money, say I don't I don't believe it, I don't believe that the market will just crash and everyone will lose their money, but I mean anything's a possibility, but you have to put that scenario in your head as if the market did fully crash tomorrow and I lost pretty much all my money, would that affect my life in any way? And if the answer is yes, then A, you need to either reduce the amount of money you're putting into it or B, if you can't afford to put any money in at all, don't because your life, your financial situation, uh, if you have kids or people to care for, they come before any sort of investment. So I encourage you to really think about how much money you are looking to put into this and for a beginner, I would not look to put in much money at the very start, even if you have quite a bit of money. So the second point is to be prepared to do your own research. And this is a really huge thing. A lot of people aren't prepared to do their own research. And maybe that means that cryptocurrency or investing in general is not for them. Because to be a successful investor, you have to do your own research. You have to do your due diligence to create a good unbiased opinion on different investments which you're looking to put money towards. Also, the third point I want to talk about is don't buy into FOMO or FUD. And the keywords being be patient. And for those who don't know, FOMO is basically the fear of missing out. So when a coin or an asset or whatever you're investing in shoots up really, really quickly uh, in a short amount of time and people think, all right, uh, this is going up, so I've got to get onto this so I can make these huge gains. Um, and this is a really bad thing as a lot of people get caught and trapped. And what happens is they buy at the top and then there's a big sell off and then they lose a lot of their money. The second one is FUD, and this is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Uh, this comes in a lot of forms, really. People, uh, I guess, influencers posting things, uh, rumors, and articles about different countries and regulations and things like that. And it's also just general overselling. So what happens is people panic, and they buy into the FUD, and then they sell, and people continue to sell and sell until it compounds and generates a real snowball effect to the point where the markets just tumble and create a crash. So the main point I'm just saying here is if you believe in the coins, buy them, hold them, do not worry about what other people say because you believe that these coins in the long run are going to make it through whatever comes their way and you are going to hold on to them no matter what because you truly believe in them. Okay, so the first thing I would advise you to do is to research the basics of blockchains, cryptocurrencies, and the features which they contain. And the question I want to pose to you first is, would you buy a business if you didn't know what that business does? So if someone was talking about how they made so much money on this business, and they were trying to sell it to you, and all they could tell you was a name, and they couldn't tell you anything else about the business, you just knew what the business's name was, would you buy that business? Hopefully your answer to this question is no, because you don't know what the business does, what it sells, how much of what it sells, what the profits are, and things like that, 
all the real technical features of how the business runs and works. And the same thing goes for cryptocurrencies. If you don't understand what you're investing in, then what's the point of investing it? Because you may as well be just throwing your money away at the pokies having a slap. Okay, so first off, I advise you to research how blockchain and Bitcoin works. And why Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin was the first ever blockchain and the first cryptocurrency. And it is the most simple and easy to understand. Granted that Bitcoin and blockchain are not a really, really easy concept to understand, but if you were going to understand a specific blockchain, Bitcoin would be the best. Second, I advise you to research the second generation cryptocurrencies. So things such as Ethereum, which bring new functionality to blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Things like virtual machines and smart contracts and decentralized applications. And then third, I would advise you to research other cryptocurrencies that you're interested in and other cryptocurrencies that are gaining traction and compare them to each other and build a list of your favorite coins. And this is not just something you do at the start and finish. This will be a continuous progress, uh, yeah, continuous process because all different coins will be changing. The fundamentals of the coins will change and there's always great new coins coming out. And some tips for researching Bitcoin and blockchain and cryptocurrencies. The first one, always read a white paper. And so in plain terms for you, make it easy for you to understand. A white paper is basically a document which a project will put out. So a cryptocurrency team will put out that describes how the cryptocurrency platform and project works and what are the features which make it tick and some of the, I guess, the things on the roadmap that they're looking to implement and the problems which they're looking to solve. And to find, about, find out about all these different things, I would recommend going on YouTube and watching a lot of YouTube videos and looking at internet articles as they're great places to gain additional information. And for YouTube, some channels which I recommend would obviously be myself, um, Nicholas Merton from Data Dash, David Hay, CryptoBud, and Box Mining, just to name a few. Okay, so the second bit, which is signing up for a fiat to crypto exchange. So this process is very similar to signing up for a different trading account. So if you've ever, ever signed up for a share trading account, you'll be very familiar with the process as you're going through it. And what you basically have to do to sign up for a trading account is you have to give your details like you would in any account, your name, date of birth, all that sort of stuff. But also you have to give your proof of ID. So this generally comes in the form of something like a driver's license or a passport. And then you have to give a proof of address. So this is normally uh, either a utilities bill or a bank statement or any other document which provides your current address. And when looking for a good fiat to crypto exchange, look for reputable exchanges with good security and liquidity and possible coin options. And I've put in your country here because it will really depend on where you are all over the world. I have people watching from all around the world and I won't be able to tell you exactly where to go. Just to be honest, I don't know every cryptocurrency exchange all over the world. So this is where you're going to have to do a bit of your own research. So type in and look around for the best cryptocurrency exchanges in X country and see what all the people are saying, see which uh, people think, what people think are the best exchanges. And some known exchanges, some well-known exchanges over in the Western world particularly, um, are Coinbase is the biggest exchange uh, currently, and Gemini, which are US exchanges. And also in Australia, we have Coinja, which is the cryptocurrency exchange that I use. There are a couple more, but these are just some examples. Next, you're gonna decide how do you want to structure your crypto portfolio? And I've put here, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of different options in the way that you can structure your portfolio from the easiest to not necessarily the hardest, but just harder than the easy options. And the first, the easiest way to do it is to hold Bitcoin or a particular coin. So just holding one coin, just buying it and leaving it and letting it just sit and accumulate, hopefully accumulate in value over the years. The next level of uh, difficulty would be to hold Bitcoin and a couple of large cap coins. So a large cap coin is any sort of coin over $1 billion market cap. Um, and I recommend probably if you're gonna do this, maybe hold some Bitcoin and then get maybe another three coins. And this is where you just buy these coins and you hold them for the long run. And then the next up, the next difficulty that you can go up to is to hold Bitcoin, 
plus trading altcoins. So this doesn't have to be any sort of cap and there's not necessarily a limit to how many you want to buy, but it will be, it will be harder to trade the coins than it will be to um, just hold them as you don't have to do anything. You just, once you bought them, you've got them and they're there. And when you're looking to decide how you want to be as an investor, you really have to ask yourself what type of investor you are and more importantly, what type of person you are. You have to be really, really realistic with what goals you're looking for and what effort you're going to put in because to trade altcoins and to move more coins around really does take more research and requires a lot more effort. And for me personally, I would recommend that first time users, I would pick the medium option, which was to hold Bitcoin and a few of the large cap alts for the long run. And you can move in, in and out of these different difficulties and change up your portfolio at any time. I just recommend to start with this. And as you feel more comfortable, you can look to trade with more altcoins. So the next step is then signing up for altcoin exchanges. So these are different to uh, fiat to crypto exchanges. So the first exchanges um, that I talked about were where you pay in whatever native currency you're going through, whether that be USD, uh, AUD, the, the pound, the yen, or any sort of country's dollar. And that's when you buy them directly with your country's dollar. So an altcoin exchange is basically where you buy other cryptocurrencies in either currently Bitcoin or Ethereum. And so for this, you will basically have to do the same sign up process, giving you proof of address and proof of ID. And for the examples that I've put here, a couple of them include Binance, Bitrex and KuCoin. The next step is to obtain some crypto wallets. And first, before you download or get any wallets, I would recommend that you go and research different methods of storing cryptocurrencies. And some different methods I have here include desktop wallets, web wallets, paper wallets, hardware wallets and mobile wallets and you can go find all about these on YouTube and Google there's a wealth of information which clearly describes what the different types do and what are their advantages and disadvantages after you've researched and decided what wallet you want to do download the necessary wallets for the cryptos that you are buying so you have them already ready to send to once you've bought the cryptos and for a beginner, I would recommend you to get a good quality uh, multi-cryptocurrency wallet, for example, Exodus. It's a good desktop wallet with some nice coins on it. Also, if you have bought crypto, I recommend you doing this after you've bought it because if you buy, buy this and then don't buy crypto, it's sort of a waste of money. But if you have bought crypto, then I would look to order a hardware wallet. All these are a little storage devices like a USB or a hard drive, which has special encryption to keep your crypto secure when you store them on that wallet. And some examples of this include the Ledger Nano S and the Trezor. After you do this, you will want to buy from the fiat exchanges and then from the crypto exchanges if necessary. And first for the fiat exchanges, you want to buy Bitcoin and other fiat accessible altcoins on your account through a cash deposit. So as you can see here, I put this screenshot here. This is from Coinjar, the uh, fiat exchange that I use. Um, I've got here, it says transfer from cash account. So how all this will work is I will go and I will deposit cash from my bank account into this cash account using a bank transfer system. Uh, this on CoinJar for me, it's instant, but different payment methods take different amounts of time. So what will happen is I'll deposit into this cash account. And then from that, I can buy Bitcoin from my cash account. So directly from my cash account. As you can see here, Bitcoin at the time of making this, uh, screenshot, I guess, is 4, 14,492 Australian dollars. And what you do is say you put $1,000 into here, you would type in $1,000 Australian, click review and confirm, and it would automatically trade your money for Bitcoin. And you would have Bitcoin show up in your account. See, so I've got a little bit of Bitcoin left in this account here. And then after you've download, or after you've bought your cryptocurrencies, so whether it be Bitcoin or on CoinJar here, I have Ethereum, Ripple, and Litecoin, you can move over to an altcoin exchange if that's the type of investment you want to be, or well, the type of invest, the type of investing you want to do, I should say. And so, if you want to do buying different altcoins, I would sign up for those altcoin exchanges first, and then on your altcoin exchange. Navigate to the deposit and withdraw page and most exchanges will either have a plus which is the same as deposit They could have a plus or a deposit 
or a minus slash withdraw next to the next to each coin. As we can see here, this is a screenshot from my Bittrex account, and these are a couple of options here. So to plus is to deposit, and to minus is to withdraw. And so what will happen when you're looking to send coins to that exchange, what you do is you'll press the plus to deposit. So if I wanted to deposit the Bitcoin I just bought, I would click on that plus and it will send, uh, it will generate an address for me to send those cryptocurrency to. And the next you would go back to your fiat exchange and transfer the Bitcoin that you bought or cryptocurrency that you bought to that address. And what will happen is it will send it to a crypto wallet on the exchange. And once confirmed in the account, so once the network has confirmed it and they've been sent to that exchange wallet, you can freely trade crypto for other coins. And once your buy order has filled, so you'll put in order like any other stock or any other asset, you'll once it's filled, you'll transfer your funds to a wallet. And I've put here in uh, caps, never leave your funds on the exchanges, especially large amounts of money, as if the money disappears from the exchange if those exchanges shut down you can't do anything about it but if you have it in a wallet with recovery keys and things like that and other countermeasures you can um, most of the time get your cryptocurrencies back okay so now some tips for designing your own personal personal diversified portfolio and the first tip i want to do is buy different coins but don't buy too many. I recommend probably if you're going to buy quite a few altcoins, I would recommend probably between 6 to 12, under 6. Um, I mean, you could do, you're probably under diversifying a little bit. And over 12, I think you're just overextending yourself a little bit as it just makes it much harder to manage and puts a bit more stress on you because you've got to do so many more things to manage your portfolio. Next tip is to buy coins from different niches. And so as you research cryptocurrencies, you'll learn that there are different coins for different applications. And some of these applications include privacy, internet of things, dApps, decentralized applications, uh, decentralized currencies, scalability, accessibility, and interoperability solutions, and decentralized exchanges. Also, it's very good to buy um, coins from different market cap ranges just to diversify a bit more. It's not the greatest hedge you could do, but for example, you could buy coins uh, from the large market, large market cap, which are greater than a billion dollars market cap. Uh, you can buy mid cap coins, which are greater than $200 million. And then you could buy small cap coins, which are less than $200 million. And so some examples of how you could structure your portfolio. And here I've got the beginner, medium and advanced uh, portfolios that I talked about before. And first off, the beginner portfolio, like I said before, this is all just getting 100% Bitcoin or a coin of your choice, the coin that you believe in the most and just buying it and holding it. The next bit, the medium uh, portfolio is I would recommend and you can adjust these numbers to however you want. This is just one example of how you could do it. 25% Bitcoin and then a split of other large caps. And so, for example, uh, you could have 25% Ethereum or NEO or Tron, as well as 25% Ripple or Cardano or IOTA, as well as 25% Litecoin or Stellar or Lisk. And these are just some cryptocurrencies within that market cap range to get you thinking about what coins you want to buy. The next one is the advanced portfolio. And for this, starting off, I'd recommend probably doing 50% Bitcoin and large caps, um, doing 25% mid caps. And some examples include Komodo, Zero X and Walton Chain, and then 25% small caps, which are Navcoin, Ubic and Substratum to name a few. And also, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not telling you to go buy these coins. Like I said, do your own research before. These are just some examples that I'm providing you for, to, for you to get started. And the last step to creating your $1,000 crypto portfolio is to hodl and trade one with solid research, two with assurance, and three with emotional fortitude. So like I said before, do not let FOMO or FUD change your mind. Research every coin that you buy and create an unbiased, objective opinion, as this will allow you to have the emotional fortitude to get you through those hard times, to get you through those big crashes, because you know that the technology is good and you believe that it will be around for the next 10, 20, 30, however many years. 
The second one, this is a really, really big one, I think, and this is investing coins which you believe could be the next Microsoft or Apple or other big companies like that. And why do you say Microsoft or Apple? Well, to tell you a story, what happened was in the early 2000s, there was a big uh, tech bubble called the dot-com bubble. And this is where a lot of technology companies were being, they were developing things for internet and other technologies like it. And people were investing in it, investing in it, and every all the prices were coming way overflated until the point that it became a massive bubble. And in the early 2000s, this bubble popped, and the markets came absolutely crashing down. And most of the companies that were involved in this dot-com bubble actually became not necessarily obsolete, but they never really recovered from that huge crash. However, there was a, probably about 5% of those companies which were actually good good companies made it out of that and they blossomed because of it. And some of these companies include Microsoft and Apple. And you can see if you looked at the price history of these stocks that they have had quite, quite a big run up since that dot com bubble. And I'm saying to you, if you're going to invest in cryptocurrencies, you've got to pick a coin where before you buy it, you have to think to yourself, if this crashed, if this had a big bubble pop and everything crashed down hugely, would this cryptocurrency make it back or would it just stay down where it's got crash where it's been crashed to? And if the answer is yes, it will bloom out of it, then buy it. But your answer if your answer is no, then I would look at buying another coin. And you've got to generate reasons why you think it will or it will not get through this. Also, three, just another little quick tip. If a coin goes parabolic, i.e. it shoots up in price a huge amount in a short amount of time, look to sell if you think that it is overextended in the short term. And so this is for more for your long-term coins. If it's a short-term coin, you can just sell it and then put it into another coin. But if it's a long-term coin, sell it when it's overextended, keep your initial investment that you put into it so you can buy it back when it's low and redistribute the profits that you got from selling that coin evenly into all your other cryptos and not just Bitcoin. So that's the end of the video. I'd like to thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please leave a like and a comment below on another cryptocurrency video you would like to see me talk about. Also, make sure if you haven't hit that subscribe button already, make sure to hit it below. And as always, I'll catch you later.